Um, so this year I was asked to talk about facial CT and to change it up a little from prior years to talk about something that has red flags and hidden implications. And so, yes, no worries. Uh, so nothing to disclose here. So, um, you know, that's a fabulously broad topic. And uh, after grilling the residents and uh, confirming with some outside reports, I could tell that there was an area of current practice that wasn't catching on as much as it should and that the residents were making it much harder than it needed to be. So what we're going to discuss today is actually this part of the facial CT that you see on the last part of the image. We're actually going to talk about temporal bone fractures. So here are the objectives for today. So the otic capsule, the ossicles, and watch this space. So the temporal bone has five parts. We're actually not going to cover too much of those today. These are in your handout for your reference if you want to study the components of the temporal bone. But what we are going to talk about today is temporal bone fracture classification. And first of all, we're going to talk about the traditional way to, tra to classify temporal bone fractures. And what you would do is you would draw a mental line Unfortunately, the mouse is not showing up for me, but um, a, a mental line down the axis of the temporal bone. And if the fracture goes along that line, then you would call it a longitudinal fracture. If it goes in the other direction or across the temporal bone, then you would call it a transverse fracture. And then if it has both, then you would call it mixed. So this is pretty easy. And here on the left, you have a nice, oh, there's the mouse, excellent. So there's a nice longitudinal temporal bone fracture here on the left. And then there's a transverse temporal bone fracture right here. So this caught on pretty well, because um, it's, uh, it's got pretty good inter-observer variability. But um, it doesn't provide a whole lot of prognostic information, unfortunately. So if that doesn't provide good prognostic information, then what does? So it turns out that these things are what are going to call, um, it's gone to sleep again, okay. Uh, these are what actually causes, gives you some prognostic information. So since I'm a trauma radiologist, I'm gonna talk about these two. So uh, trapped skin fragments causing late cholesteatoma, I'm not gonna see it in the trauma setting. In cephaloceles, it turns out if there is brain herniating into the temporal bone, that's bad, and you should tell them about that. And then facial nerve involvement is highly correlated with otic capsule involvement and is also often a clinical diagnosis as well. So we're going to focus on these two. So the why then, otic capsule involvement actually greatly increases your risk of sensory neural permanent hearing loss, facial nerve injury and paralysis, and CSF fistulas. Ossicular dislocations are a source of conductive hearing loss, and actually these are fixable with variable outcomes, but you can actually go in and repair these guys. So that's why we have these two as our objectives right here. And then this one's going to become clear in a little bit. So in terms of this classification system, this is not a classification system with a whole bunch of subtypes that you need to think about. It is really, really easy. It's binary. It's either involving the aortic capsule or it's not. So we describe them as disrupting, violating, or sparing. Now, um, I hope you guys really like this diagram over here because I spent an undisclosable amount of time on it. Um, but still, you know, the problem is the otic capsule is actually a bit complicated. It's got the semicircular canals, the anterior, posterior, and lateral, and it's got the vestibule, which has a couple of orifices in it, and the saccule and the utricle, and then you've got the cochlea in there. And while there are many excellent lectures and articles on this topic, if this is not your area of specialization, it can kind of lead you wondering, um, what was that middle part? So, you know, it turns out that these sort of half-circle things are the semicircular canals, and the cochlea was actually called that because it looks like a cockle shell. But for this purpose, it really doesn't matter, because you remember that classification system, right? They didn't ask you to work out which part of the otic capsule was involved. It just wants to, you just have to tell them whether it was involved at all. And so what I don't want you to do is to try and take something that's clearly unfamiliar in this structure and try to mention, mentally jam it in here as you're scrolling through a trauma CT with a bunch of fractures on it, right? It doesn't work very well. So let's see if we can make this a little bit easier. So what I have here is a 3D image of the skull that we're looking down from above. And what I'm going to do in my 3D reconstruction software is I'm gonna window this down until all the thinner bone starts to disappear. So it's fading away until only the really dense bone is left behind. And in fact, if I window it all the way down, it turns out that what I'm left with is these two structures right here. And this is the otic capsule on both sides. This is the densest bone in the human body. It is really, really dense, which gives us an awesome way to find these on CT. So this is the same image twice. On one side, I have highlighted the otic capsule. But on the other side, you can look for it yourself. 
And quite honestly, it is like this shining white beacon that is just glaring at you, sitting in the middle of the temporal bone. You can see all the edges of it. This little curly thing over here happens to be a semicircular canal. It doesn't even matter, though. If it's got this really dense, bright white stuff around it, that is the otic capsule. So let's see if we can use this to actually classify some fractures. So what you have here is the same image twice. One side is going to have the arrows on it, one side without. You can look at whichever side you prefer. And as we scroll through, we can see that the patient has a longitudinal temporal bone fracture going along the axis there. And so we can scroll back and forth and follow the path of that longitudinal temporal bone fracture. But the question for you guys is, does it or does it not involve this really shiny white thing right here? It does not, absolutely. So there's the otic capsule, and there's that longitudinal temporal bone fracture. This is an otic capsule sparing fracture. So here's another one, looks a little familiar. This was that transverse fracture example. There it is. There's the big shiny white thing. Does this one involve the otic capsule? Not either. So this is a transverse fracture, also otic capsule sparing. All right, we're going to take the training wheels off. No more arrows. So we have a fracture over here. It's coming all the way across, right? This is a transverse temporal bone fracture. But this one is going right through the middle of this white structure right here. Therefore, this is an otic capsule involving or disrupting fracture. Now, the question is, can it really be that easy? It is that easy. That, that really is it. I'm going to try and make it hard. This is the hardest case I could find in my whole collection. So we're going to try and make it hard. There is a fracture right here. This is a transverse temporal bone fracture. And as we scroll through, it is involving just this little edge. Do you see that little edge right there? And it turns out, you know, there's a little bit of air in this semicircular canal over here. So this one is skimming the extreme edge of the uh, otic capsule on that lateral margin, but it's still going right through the white part, right? So this one is an otic capsule violating fracture. So that is as hard as I can make it. So keep these little bright things in mind. They're really going to help you track down that otic capsule. Now we're going to briefly talk about some ossicles. And in terms of ossicular dislocation, there are many tiny fractures and tiny dislocations that are just not even going to be truly evident on the immediate trauma study because there's some motion and they're often two millimeter images, but most importantly, there's blood in the middle ear. So if there's persistent conductive hearing loss at the one month mark, they'll actually bring the patient back and do a temporal bone CT when the um, hemotimidinum has resolved. So why are we even talking about this then? Well, uh, quite honestly, missing a gross ossicular dislocation is just embarrassing. So um, let's try to avoid that. So here's the normal anatomy, and this is all we're going to cover. This is that very typical, and I'm sure several of you or many of you have seen this before. It just makes a little ice cream cone. This happens to be the malleus. This happens to be the incus. But we're going to call it the ice cream and the ice cream cone here. And your ice cream should be sitting nice front and center on top of your cone. Here's a trauma patient with a pretty good looking ice cream cone on this side. But on the other side, I've got an ice cream cone without any ice cream on it. So this is an ossicular dislocation due to this longitudinal temporal bone fracture right here. It doesn't have to be that obvious. On this, here's your normal again for reference. But on this side, we've got that slight distraction. Our ice cream is just falling off the cone here. This is also an ossicular disruption. And about as subtle as it comes, so even this one, there's air and distraction at the ossicles. So remember, to avoid embarrassment, you have to make sure you got a perfect ice cream every time. So that's these two. Now, you may be wondering, if this is supposed to be a temporal lecture, why there is a big circle over the sphenoid sinus. And hopefully, this is going to become clear in a second. This is a facial CT patient. They have a longitudinal temporal bone fracture. And you're going to dedicate a very nice component of your report to talking about this fracture. Then as you scroll up, you happen to see that this patient has a whole bunch of left facial fractures. And you're going to commit an entirely new paragraph. And you're going to start talking about these facial fractures, right? So I'm going to tell you today why maybe you shouldn't. There is a fracture of the sphenoid sinus here. And there's blood in the sphenoid sinus on the other side. So if I take this patient and put them back into our 3D reconstruction software and make this bizarrely slightly axial oblique image, do you see what I see? This is all one fracture, and it goes straight across the central skull base. If you don't believe me, here's another patient who had these two temporal bone fractures described separately in their report. But this kid was in a T-bone MVC and was hit on the left side of the head only. So that explains the left-sided temporal bone fracture but it doesn't explain anything about the right one, unless you're paying a lot of attention to the middle of this picture, right? How did it get to the right? 
It went straight across the middle. And it turns out that there's a lot of important structures sitting right here. And in fact, if you zoom it up, you can see the flap in the carotid artery on the left, and that was actually a grade one injury on the right. So when you're first going, because I, I don't expect you all to believe me right away, when you're first looking at these, go back to your institutions and go and look at the sagittal images. This is a patient with a bilateral temporal bone fracture. And so we're going to ignore the posterior aspect that's going out the occiput, right? But we are going to track this fracture all the way across the central skull base. Now watch this space sitting right in front of the carotid artery. This happens to be the junction between the, the sphenoid and the temporal bone, but this is the autobahn. This is the railroad. This is the highway straight into the sphenoid sinus because this fracture just keeps on going right through the sphenoid body. This can set you up for, for CSF leaks and of course vascular injuries because it's involving the carotid canal on both sides. Right out the other side, there it is going through that, um, set, uh, through that junction again and right out into the other temporal bone. So if you see bilateral temporal bone fractures or you see a single temporal bone fracture and you see blood in the sphenoid as well, pull up those sagittals and start tracking that fracture because you may end up ordering a CTA in that patient. So this is really it. So otic capsule, the ossicles, and watch this space. So let's see, let's see, this is gonna be the last case then. We're gonna test yourselves on this. So first we're gonna look for those bright white shining beacons, right? We're gonna pull up this, this temporal bone CT. And this may be the case that, you know, when you first started, uh, you know, before this lecture, you might have opened it and then closed it as fast as you can so nobody sees your eyeball on the case and decided to take an important phone call. But hopefully after this lecture, you feel like you can really jump into this. So this patient actually has a transverse fracture coming across right here. So it gets really close, doesn't it? It gets close to that otic capsule, but I don't see any fracture lines in the otic capsule itself. So this transverse component in this patient is not involving the otic capsule. Now there's another fracture coming all the way up here, right? It's coming all the way through the middle ear. And wait a minute, there's a fracture in the sphenoid and there's blood in the sphenoid sinus. And in fact, if I keep an eye on that, it's going right up to the carotid canal again, right? We'll see this a lot in, temp in longitudinal temporal bone fractures. But again, we're looking for otic capsule involvement. It comes right along this anterior aspect. I don't see any involvement of that bright white shiny thing. So the longitudinal component does not involve the otic capsule either. So there's my transverse component. And then there's my longitudinal component going all the way up to the midline. Now in terms of ossicles, you know, I don't know, a bit subtle. Um, so if your ice cream's over here and your cone's over there, then probably you're gonna call ossicular dislocation in this patient. So now that you have seen where the otic capsule and the ossicles are, you would read this clearly as a mixed longitudinal and transverse left temporal bone fracture. You would call this otic capsule sparing with ossicular dislocation, and you would recommend a CTA to exclude a vascular injury. So when your colleague comes up to you and says, wow, that was an awesome report, and how did you do that? You can respond with the immortal words of Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.